Hey there folks, so welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the newest album from Foxygen called Hang. So as I think I've mentioned in passing a number of times on this show, I'm a big fan of going out to karaoke bars. And yet whenever I say this, I tend to get a lot of sidelong glances and comments of, wait, you're a music critic, how in the hell could you stomach that? Well, part of it comes from the privilege of living in Toronto and getting exposure to a ton of fantastic singers and genuine artists that come from a prolific art scene. I imagine it's very much the same in like New York City or Los Angeles. So on average, the quality tends to be a little bit better. But at the same time, it gave me an acute sense of perspective. Many of these people are incredible performers. They do this for a living far better than I ever will, even at a karaoke bar. And despite my side project pretensions to making original music that you'll never hear, for some of these people, it's their life, with karaoke just being an outlet for practice and letting off steam. Now, I'm not going to sell myself that short. I'm a pretty good singer when I want to be. But at the end of the day, even despite being a critic, there's a difference between being a hardcore music fan with a penchant for showing off, like me, and an actual musician with poise and training, especially when it comes to the creative process of writing and performing. Now I say all this because when I started listening to early Foxygen albums, I got the immediate impression that this would probably be the sort of music that I would make if I lacked the restraint or self-awareness to pull away and realize my own limitations. Because look, I love 70s rock, but that 2012 album, Take the Kids Off Broadway, was very much an example of loving the sound and the style and the textures, but not really having a grasp on cohesion or composition, especially in the writing. Now, they definitely improved on their next record considerably, We Are the 21st Century Ambassadors of Peace and Magic, a half-ironic title, I think, given how much their style nakedly aped the 20th century, although I would seriously question in terms of songwriting how much capacity this band has for irony, even if I did feel the overall writing felt tighter overall. It's a good album. But then came in Star Power, a double album a year later, diving back towards rougher, more lo-fi territory, and that same sense of cacophonous composition. And yet the splatter painting style of writing and composition didn't have that same energy or groove or momentum. Say nothing of some painfully redundant lyricism. You do not want to get me started on how painfully weak the concept of this album feels, especially given how sloppy some of the recording and playing feels. Now granted, some have argued that was representative of the duo's famously contentious relationship around that time, but for as much as Fox Jr. have idolized the 70s, you'd think they'd take a lesson from, say, Fleetwood Mac when they made Rumors and not throw cohesion out the window. But hey, they managed to hold it all together to pull together an album that they've called their California album with Hang, going even bigger and grander than ever. So, okay, did it work? Oh boy. Okay, so you all remember when I said that there's a big difference between being a diehard music fan or critic like me and, you know, a trained musician with instincts for composition and restraint? Well, if you weren't convinced by their previous albums, I can see some people looking at this and thinking that they finally might have found their groove in grandiose music history masturbation. I'm sorry, I callbacks and tributes. In other words, this should be perfect music nerd bait, especially for a guy like me who loves over the top 70s rock, especially when you factor in elements of vaudeville, big band music that goes back even further, and even hints of country sounds that crept into LA in the late 60s and 70s, all brought together with some grand statement about the United States of America. And yet after a good dozen listens and the more I dug into the writing, the more I'm feeling that I'm missing the climax here. More of a whirlwind patchwork of cliff mokes about that era that end up meaning far less than the sounds that they reference. And in context for this review, I think it's important to reference one of the original purveyors of similar similar sounds and over-the-top excess that has been referenced a number of times in critical discussions of this album. And it's also one of my favorite albums of all time, Bat Outta Hell by Meatloaf. Now, to some extent, the records, they obviously run in different lanes in the details. Bat Outta Hell trafficked in overheated machismo, pseudo-gothic swagger, and the sort of melodrama that gave Meatloaf and Jim Steinman an excuse to crank everything up to 11. But at their core, the overarching themes of an American dream that has failed, a confused, oversexed, and misspent youth, uh, which would be a much greater focus on Bat Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell, that does have some pathos and parallels with Hang, especially in the LA context, a place where any and all dreams could happen and could come true. And both albums and their compositions draw upon melodic trends of the past in vaudeville kitsch, big band spectacle, and Phil Spector wall sound techniques. Hell, you could even make an argument that with the smoother melodic transitions on Hang, they were capturing a more abbreviated version 
representation of what Steinman was looking to do in a lot of his compositions. Now, of course, there are some major differences. Foxygen is bringing together a more assured, languid tempo and pace to this project, with the more elaborate horns and lush string sections. I call them my mid to late 70s Billy Joel and Elton John. From the choppy rollick of Fall the Leader to the piano bar melancholy of Miss Adams. From the touches of gentle pencil steel and layered country melodies on Owen Lakenshin to the creaking vaudeville piano, screwball percussion, tuba, girl group backing vocals, and the tap dance interlude of Avalon. This entire record is swimming in broad, golden age of Hollywood theatricality. From the waltz cadence and lush twinkles of America playing off the painfully elaborate piano interlude that breaks towards smooth jazz, because of course it does, to the sort of soul-bearing breakdown against the deeper horns and riffs on trauma that I can't help but feel that Father John Misty already satirized far better on board in the USA, even if I do like the main melodic hook behind that song. Hell, the album even ends with Rise Up, a bells-driven and utterly overblown inspirational ballad complete with organ, guitar flourishes, and a ridiculous amount of arranged bombast, with the only real hints of rock coming through in some squealing, chunky strums that roar through the mix, and probably would have been definitely welcomed across this album. I wanted this record to rock a little harder. Now, we'll get to some of the satire that I mentioned in a second, but for as much as I find a lot of the opulence kind of charming in a weird way, this is also where my appreciation for this record crashes into a brick wall. For one, for as many stylistic melodic shifts as there are within songs, there's a part of me that thinks that Foxygen is kind of playing it safe here, certainly in their choice of textures, almost a little stifled by all the pomp and circumstance of it all, certainly not with the same wiry rock edge that worked on earlier projects. And that wouldn't be an issue if, again, I didn't feel like Father John Misty went in the exact same direction on I Love You Honey Bear for much greater returns thanks to more developed hooks, writing, and much stronger vocal delivery. And yeah, vocals are a huge factor here, as I don't have a damn clue why Sam France thought this third delivery was a good idea. I get using the girl group backing vocals as a pastiche of the times, but why he did not for thicker multi-tracking to command these mixes is a baffling choice, because he certainly doesn't have the raw presence to command them by themselves. He doesn't have the effortless poise of a Billy Joel or a Father John Misty, and he sure as hell doesn't have the same gopher-broke bombast and power of meat loafers, say like Kyle Kraft, who at Dolls of Highland took a much better hold of similar sounds and dragged them into rougher, more potent territory. Now, here Fran seems to be singing in the, his sort of weedy indie rock tones, which does not work for this sound, or even worse, trying for this throaty vibrato that seems to recall Colm Wilkinson, but with no greater bass or presence that he had. And it doesn't remotely fit with the 70s grooves or vibes to have your vocal delivery reminiscent of Jean Valjean. But, of course, that is kind of the point, because reportedly on this album, like Battle to Hell is supposed to parody the American dream through its over-the-top grandeur obscuring those who suffer and die in that pursuit and oh my god I have seen Beyond the Valley of the Dolls 2 this was ground that was broken so often in the 70s it's not even funny at this point this is where we have to get into the writing and where I feel this album falls painfully short not only is Foxygen primarily dealing in parodic archetypes that were overused 40 years ago that's where the development often stops this is a record that references broad American style stereotypes and makes halting attempts to try to tell a darker story on songs like Miss Adams, but none of it feels all that well developed or expanded, certainly not in comparison to the overwritten singer-songwriters of the 70s, or those like Kyle Kraft and Father John Misty who follow in their footsteps nowadays. And that lack of greater development and insight, all the way down to the corny metaphors of it all referencing Christmas and being within yourself all along, it feels so the more flimsy and hollow to the point where you just wonder if Fox and Newman were just playing it straight the entire damn time. But even if they were, and they were just going for broke, look, to circle back to Bat Out of Hell, Jim Simon understood that he was writing high melodrama, but he wrote it with the pomp and the circumstance to mean so much more that if you can get sucked into it, it could transcend its own silliness. Hang, in contrast, is so underwritten that it feels like it's stretching to even reach the cliches, let alone satirize or transcend them. Reference flamingos all you want on two straight songs, but you could be so much more creative than this. And that's not even touching songs like Follow the Leader, where the melodrama seems to be going in a two out of three ain't bad direction, and yet it ends up coming just kind of sanctimonious and pissy thanks to a lot of the delivery. And yet, at the end of the day, 
I still think this record is passable on some level. That's how much the 70s sound works for me. I can't help it. And I will give them some credit for some appropriately lush production and melodies that do have a certain grandiose ambition to them, even if they're wedged into bite-sized nuggets here. And sure, if this is what Foxygen needed to pull out of a tailspin, all the more power to them. But look, let's be real here. They're not treading new or interesting ground when it comes to this sort of style or theme, and the vocals and writing really lets this record down in my books. For me, I'm thinking of like 6 out of 10 and only a recommendation if you're a diehard 70s or golden age of Hollywood fan who can take a good ribbing along with it. But if I was gonna look for that sort of send up, look folks, listen to Bad Out of Hell or watch Beyond the Valley of the Dolls or maybe At Long Last Love to make it a double feature. Both movies are great. You'll get a lot more laughs and insight than this. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I'm trying something a little bit new with my tech setup, so if it looks a little bit weird in this video, that's the reason why. If you're still interested in this album, the link is in the description below if you want to buy it. And the polls appear, so if you all want to tell me how wrong I am, there's your opportunity. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process, well, three times a week, the option is available on my Patreon for you guys to vote. And once a week on the Saturdays for the higher Patreon contributors, you guys get to add records to that schedule. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.